This train terminates at... Public transport at times can be the worst experience possible, whether it be an annoyance on a train or a bus driver who's having a bad day. When you're just trying to get to your destination, public transport can put a dark cloud over you. That would be on the rarer side of days though, and for the majority of people, myself included, public transport has been an absolute lifesaver. Many of you will be familiar with the London Underground and how much it helps the residents of the capital, but to say that the Underground doesn't come with its issues would be an understatement. Cough, cough, workers going on strike. All of the problems associated with public transport are fairly trivial when put into perspective, but what about those instances where you're unfortunate enough to be caught up in something so serious your life is in immediate danger? What about an incident which includes a man with a machete ready to target you at random for no apparent reason? On the evening of July 9th, 2021, self-employed businessman James Porritt had been working out at the gym and decided he wanted to meet up with his girlfriend and her father. It had been a Friday, so it was good vibes for a summer weekend. The workout went great. James was feeling fresh and ready to enjoy the evening. So at around 6pm, he walked to the closest underground station, Westminster, to board a train headed for West London. We don't exactly know whereabouts in West London he was going to, but what we do know is that James had been feeling nervous about meeting his girlfriend's father. We'll assume they'd never met before. Meeting the family is all that was on his mind, so James boarded the packed out train, managed to grab himself a seat, and went on his phone to try and calm his nerves. He'd been scrolling for a couple of minutes, but out of nowhere he recalled hearing screaming, and then this happened. Everyone on the train had been minding their own business, had been in their own bubble, so to speak. But as the train had been pulling into the next stop, Green Park Station, 34-year-old Ricky Morgan produced a machete and a lock knife from his rucksack and targeted James specifically. This is not a terror attack. I only want him. I don't want to kill you. I want to kill him. Ricky screamed as he continued to lay blows into James. You might think the two had some sort of history, but this was the first time they ever encountered one another. It was a random attack on a random person. James would go on to plead with Ricky to stop, but he continued. He was emotionless. Talking of those moments, James said he didn't have any compassion, but seemed focused on attacking me. He was hellbent on what he was doing. Eventually, everyone managed to flee the carriage, locking Ricky within. James would receive immediate medical attention from a doctor on board the train, and police were called to the scene. We have to him. Not somebody get no, saved, you no, no, you don't have no, to. You don't have to. I'm, I'm alright. It's not. It's not. It's not. Right, Andy, I'm in the car. Shut up! Face down. I'm facing what? down. Get, get that well, taser I'm on. I'm facing down. Hang on. Taser on. Taser on. Get it on. Get it on. Do not move. Do you understand? I understand. Go and cuff. Stand by. Stand by. That's why I took my jacket off. So you knew it wasn't. No, I'm fine. It's just someone I got beef with in the street. Put the phone down! I haven't got a phone. Stay still! Everyone move down! Stay still! Move! Stand Jason Shaw! Get in 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 Upon being arrested, Ricky told officers this wasn't a terrorist attack, rather 
a street beef, adding if I had known it would cause this much drama, I wouldn't have done it. James was rushed to hospital where he received treatment for bone deep cuts to his head and shin, along with a severe injury to his right hand. He nearly lost one of his fingers. Eventually, Ricky would go on to be charged with attempted murder and two counts of possessing an offensive weapon in a public place to which he denied. In police interviews, he claimed he couldn't remember the incident, then refused to answer any further questions. He would eventually go on trial when after two days of deliberations, he was found guilty on all the charges that were brought against him. He's to be sentenced one year on from the incident on the 22nd of July, 2022. Ricky's defense would try and argue that he had schizophrenia and this diminished his responsibility, but the jury didn't agree. He had told doctors he heard voices just prior to the attack. We'll never truly know why he decided to attack a random man that day and attempt to take his life, but Ricky was an avid drug user, so that could have definitely played a big role into why he did what he did. 